Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain, day 32 of the lockdown. That's right, 32 days that we have been confined to our homes and no end in sight as of today and possible extensions are looming and I'll have a look at that in a little bit. Now before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video, more than 800 comments. So a big thanks for that participation. Also a big shout out for all of the people that decided to support the channel through a small donation. You can see your names here. So uh, greatly appreciated for that. Now let's have a look at some of the news that has caught my attention over the last couple of days. Now the first thing unfortunately is that there has been a spike in the daily infection rate due to the Easter effect. The Easter effect is the way that they compile all of the data. And it's a bit delayed because there have been public holidays over the last few days and different public holidays in different areas in Spain. So there's been a bit of a delay with some of the data over the last few days. And we can see here on the graph the spike that they are talking about here. Now some people here are starting to ask themselves that after 32 days of confinement, why are there still so many cases on a daily basis? So we can see here that yesterday, 5,092 new cases. How are people still catching this disease if we have been confined for the last 32 days? Where are people picking it up? Are they picking it up in the supermarket? Are they picking it up at work? Where are they catching this virus? That's the question. Now, to tell you the truth, I've got no idea, but if you have a theory, please leave it in the comment section below. Now, another piece of news that caught my attention is that Spain is leaving behind the Italian path and is entering unknown territory. Spain has so far followed Italy's footsteps point by point, but the return to work this week of hundreds of thousands of people to revive the economy breaks with the dynamics. Experts assume that there will be more infections, but they think that it could be positive. Now, as we can see up until now, Spain has been basically following everything that Italy has been doing, but they have now decided to break away from that path as we can see here. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks as Spain goes into uncharted waters, as this headline says. Now, some European countries are preparing apps to help track the contacts of infected people. And we can see here that we'll get an alert on our phone that says that we have been in contact with someone who has tested positive. Now it's gonna be curious to see how this works. You pick up your phone and it gives you an alert and it tells you of people in your contact list who have been infected. So another way they're gonna be using technology to help fight this, but again, is it too intrusive? Now another headline here, Spain's body of attorneys is questioning fines for disobedience if there is no advance warning from the agent or the police officer. Now apparently there have been on the spot fines without warnings from police officers over the last few weeks and the state attorney body is now questioning whether this is legal. And there is a chance that a lot of these fines will be overturned if they don't adhere to the law. Now, Congress has reserved April 22 for a possible further extension of the state of the alarm. Now, remember that it was only gonna go up until April 26th, so more likely there will be another 15 days on top of that, and we'll find out on April the 22nd whether that is going to be the case. Now, according to one newspaper, Spain does still not meet the criteria to exit confinement. The WHO sets six requirements to relax measures of social distancing, and apparently Spain does not meet this criteria yet. So again, not good news if we're expecting some type of lift to the confinement here in Spain. Now some news about the economy that was circulating yesterday. We can see here historical crash. Spanish GDP will sink 8% this year and unemployment will exceed 20% according to the International Monetary Fund. Spain will suffer the biggest collapse in its recent history, higher than 2009, although it will regain some ground in 2021 with growth of 4.3%, which leaves the unemployment rate at 17.5%. Of the great world economies, only Italy will suffer so much. So bad news obviously there from an economy point of view, but nothing that people weren't expecting. Again, some more news about the economy, this time tourism. Remember the importance of tourism to a country like Spain. I think something like 90 million people visited the country last year, and we can see here that tourism is giving up at least 80% of this year's business. So an 80% drop in the tourism industry here in Spain. So terrible news there for the economy. And finally, an opinion piece here from the New York Times. 
Spain's lethal secret. We didn't have the best healthcare in the world. It took Prime Minister Sanchez too long to bring coherence to the pandemic's response. Overconfidence in our healthcare capacity took care of the rest. Now, this is one of the key questions here in Spain. A lot of people have the health system on a very, very high pedestal. And to be honest, it's not a bad system, but it's not as good as politicians would like us to believe. The constant message from politicians and a lot of the population here is that this is the best healthcare system in the world. And obviously, it has come as a shock to many Spaniards like this author here, David Jimenez, that the system wasn't prepared of a crisis of this magnitude. But again, not many health systems around the world were. Now, some of the comments on the last video, the first one here from Ibrahim. He says, thank you very much for your videos. It's really depressing. I live in Barcelona in a shared apartment where my room doesn't have a window looking at the street. I can only see a small part of the sky through the patio. I feel like being in prison. Now, unfortunately, Ibrahim, there's a lot of bad housing in Spanish cities, especially the big cities around Spain. Madrid has some terrible housing, and anybody who's ever been looking for a flat to rent in Madrid will know that there are some terrible things out there. Lots of houses don't have windows that face onto the street. They have this interior patio type system, and if you're on the ground floor, you don't get a lot of light at all. This is one of the reasons why Spanish people love to spend so much time in the street. And I can understand your frustrations if you are doing it tough in one of these uh, flats in a city like Barcelona or Madrid. If you are living in an apartment or a flat here in Spain, what's it like? Share it in the comment section below. Do you have natural light? Are you stuck in one of these interior type apartments? Let us know in the comment section below. The next one here from Valeria, she says, are people supporting local non-essential businesses, locales de pueblo, example, clothes, florists, shoe shops, or has everyone stopped buying or are people relying on purchasing from large retail giants like Amazon? Interesting to know where people's money for non-essential purchases are going now that these shops have been closed for 30 days. Well, that is the case. A lot of these businesses don't have online solutions and a lot of these smaller businesses have been forced to close. People are buying things on Amazon. People are buying things on El Corte Inglés, the big retailers, because as I said, it's not easy to access a lot of these smaller retailers and they are closed and they have been closed for the last 30 days. Even when it comes to buying takeaway food, a lot of the local restaurants are closed and the only ones that I can access, for example, are some of the bigger chains like Burger King. So it's not easy to access some of the smaller businesses at the moment, at least where I am here on the outskirts of Madrid. But I hope the situation's different in some of the other areas in Spain. One here from Saw Ars, he says, my cousin is in Mallorca. Apparently the lockdown over there is much more severe than England, thanks. Yeah, I believe it is much more severe in the sense that we can't do any type of exercise outdoors. We can't go for a ride on our bikes. The only things that we can do is take the dog out for a walk if you have one. We can't even take kids to a local park, for example, so that they can exercise. We can only go to buy essential things from the supermarket, from the pharmacy, and of course, tobacco if you're a smoker. So in that regard, I imagine that it is more severe than in England. I don't really know what's happening in the UK because obviously I don't have any family living there. My family lives in Australia, and I know that in Australia, for example, there's still a lot more things than you can do than here. For example, my mother talks about going to buy coffee still. Coffee shops are operating. They have like a hole in the wall where you can still buy a coffee. You can get a takeaway sandwich. All of those things here are virtually impossible. So in that regard, Soros, it is stricter here than the UK most likely. But again, if you're in the UK, let us know in the comment section below what you can and can't do. Another comment here from Andres. It's in Spanish, but I'll translate it. He says, I'm Spanish and he lives in Linares which is in Jaén, and he says that he still hasn't been able to get a mask. There's no discrimination, but you have to be on your toes. Now, basically, that's the situation, and a few other people said the same thing. We don't think that there's discrimination. One of the comments in the last video said that they felt that they were being discriminated against because they were English, and the local pharmacy was selling masks to Spanish people, but not to the English. Now, various people have also commented here. There's another one here from EuroSP, who is also Spanish, and they say that in one month, I was only able to get one mask even having relatives working in a pharmacy. There's no masks. It's as simple as that. And that's the big question. There just aren't masks available. My girlfriend called the local pharmacy last Thursday to order a mask. And today, Wednesday, we're still waiting for the return phone call. 
So obviously chemists and pharmacies don't have masks available. So I don't think it's a question of discrimination. Another one here from Elaine. She says, hi, Stuart, great information. I live here in Spain and my daughter and her family are booked to come out to visit me in August. Do you think that will still be possible? Now, again, I don't know. My parents were scheduled to come here in September. I've told them basically to postpone that trip until next year when the situation calms down a little bit, simply because I don't want them coming from Australia to Europe, where there is a higher risk of catching this problem at the moment. Again, will there be flights available in August? I don't know. I know that the tourist sector would most likely love people to come here and have a summer as normal, but at the moment, I think it's a little bit too early to tell, but we'll see over the next few weeks to see whether this is a possibility or not, Elaine. Now, another one here from free for dragon Ball. Since you answered Janice, I'm in the same situation. I have a health condition and I need to exercise regularly. Do you think we can get a permit somehow to do that? A confinement is not to deteriorate anyone's health. What do you think? Again, free fall, I don't think you can get a permit from the doctor to exercise. Nobody is allowed to go outside their homes and exercise. And as we have seen, police are warning people and giving fines. So I don't think you can do it. The only thing I can suggest is that you try to get some type of exercise equipment from home. But again, that's going to be difficult because I saw the other day that treadmill sales are up 400% in Spain. So it might be difficult to even get a treadmill or an exercise bike at the moment, but I don't think you're gonna be able to break the confinement yet, even with a doctor's certificate. Linda says, I'm a language assistant in Murcia. Any news on if the schools will be returning before the end of May? My contract ends then. And as it stands at the moment, it doesn't look too positive teaching remotely for now. To be honest, I don't think schools are going to go back. I think it's too much of a risk to have children running around and possibly coming home and infecting other people. Most likely you'll keep on teaching remotely until your contract expires and then you'll be able to go home. I personally don't see schools going back. And another comment also said that they don't see schools going back until September. So that's the most likely scenario at this stage, I would say. Naomi says, hi, I'm from the Costa del Sol in Marbella. Do you have any news about how many infected people we are here? I can only hear the news from other places and not my place? Are they hiding it to the community? No, I don't think they would be hiding the news about that particular area. There are places online where you can see the case rates by municipality. For example, I checked out my local area the other day and there were something like 400 cases in the entire area and there's about 90,000 people living here. So I'm sure, Naomi, that if you go online, you'll be able to find that information specifically about Marabella or that Costa del Sol area, or in the worst scenario, about the Malaga province. Now that's all I have to talk about today. Questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. I'll let you guys debate the situation out as you normally do. Keep those comments coming along. Hasta luego and uh, stay safe.